much for coming. Uh, we're delighted to have you here. Um, given your sort of leading work on presenting climate change to the broader public through the British Museum, uh, what lessons have you learned so far and, and how you present it to the broader public? Sure, I think leading would be uh, slightly taking it a step too far. Uh, but like, I do find climate change to be an absolutely fascinating topic. And I do believe that archaeology has a crucial role to play in how the popular understanding of this transformation of our planet will occur. Um, how it's communicated is a difficult thing to do. Museum exhibitions are one area where we can touch on it, and that is something I've did with the, an exhibition this summer called Where the Thunderbird Lives, Cultural Resilience on the Northwest Coast of North America, where we try to look at long-term human environment climate relationships on the Northwest Coast and celebrate uh, the First Nation and Indigenous communities that have lived in the Northwest Coast for more than 10,000 years and see what lessons there are to learn. And that is the sort of example where an exhibition can help communicate uh, issues surrounding climate change to a broader public. Um, I find that museum exhibits try to connect people to cultures that are most impacted and on the front line of climate change. How do you make sure that people that feel like they're further away from climate change um, connect and understand the message of how pertinent it is to their everyday lives? Uh, it's a good question. Often in an exhibition, people are looking for the most sensational of subject matter. Therefore, island abandonment of um, low-lying atolls in the Pacific, like Kiribati, or high Arctic um, community impact of current melting of sea ice are the sort of key issues today where people are living on the front line of climate change and having to deal with that. And that is a way of hooking in the public in a dramatic way. Uh, trying to engage people with climate change on a more sort of day-to-day -day basis uh, it can be tricky, right? No one cares about recycling issues in urban London. Um, and therefore, how you would pitch that as an exhibition would be a challenge. But I think that you have to hope that on any subject which touches on climatic or environmental issues, people learn about the issues and they reflect upon their own life inevitably. And therefore, whatever visitor comes around the exhibition, they reflect through the paradigm of what they look at on their own life. And that is what is important. Uh, and I think that is what museums can achieve. Do you have any other advice for uh, emerging practitioners or researchers within archaeology uh, who are focusing on climate change? Uh, I don't know what advice. Advice always feels like I have something to give which is not is some sort of secret knowledge, which I don't. But um, the key thing I would say is engage with other disciplines that work in climate change particularly with the global climate change community which are dealing with the impact of climate change on a global scale because reality means that whatever we produce in archaeology has to have a meaning to an international debate and when you engage with the international debate you realize that the theoretical paradigms and the structure of discussion which is going on is completely different to our own disciplinary discussions and therefore you need to see what the discussions going on are and then transform what you're doing in your research to engage with that international discussion and that way you engage properly and have a message which communicates effectively. Otherwise, you stay within your own discipline.